Business leaders from Canadian cities are in Ottawa today sounding the alarm. They say their downtown cores aren't safe and they want the federal government to help. David Thurton reports. The leaders say problems such as addictions, mental health and homelessness are not just Vancouver or Toronto issues. They're now nationwide problems that have gotten worse since COVID-19. This was a trajectory we were on, but definitely the pandemic accelerated it. Um, and especially in the last couple of years, as more people are coming back to our downtowns, coming back to commercial main streets, there is real challenges that we're facing on our streets that small businesses are facing day to day, whether they're feeling, you know, how do they keep their employees safe? How do employers keep their workers safe? The business leaders want to see changes to Canada's bail laws to keep offenders behind bars. Amendments that don't just target violent offenders, but repeat offenders involved in shoplifting and other retail crime. The International Downtown Association Canada cautions, though, that jail is not the only solution. Jail might not be the answer for a lot of folks. They might do, you know, a, a short sentence. But then what is the plan? Are they in a state that they can go back into the community and not cause further harm to the community? Or do they need to be in some sort of bridge housing? Do they need other supports when they're released? And I think most Canadians would be shocked by how little care and how little planning goes into post-release. The group is calling for investments in mental health and addiction supports and also housing. David Thurton, CBC News, Ottawa. Okay, let's dig deeper with who we just heard speaking in that uh, story there, David Thornton's story, Kate Fenske. She is the chair of the International Downtown Association of Canada, which represents urban business districts across the country. She joins me tonight from Ottawa. Kate, thanks for being here. Thanks for the time, Travis. Why did you want to, uh, I guess, dip your toe into this discussion? Because it can be sometimes very polarizing and, and it is clearly very political. Absolutely. And I think the main thing that, you know, we've been experiencing in our downtowns and main streets from coast to coast is there are new challenges out there. And so for us, it was really an opportunity to come to Ottawa um, as a coalition uh, of Canadian BIAs uh, to have these discussions about what do we do, what is needed, and what really are the challenges that businesses, residents, visitors are facing in our communities. And so absolutely, it can be polarizing, but I think the thing that's needed moving forward is it, we do need to come together to talk about these, to come up with solutions. We have to set the politics aside, that's really critical. And we need collaboration right now with the federal government leading that conversation to figure out what do we do in our communities. So give me a list, if you, if you can, kind of a, your, your elevator pitch for what some of those solutions are and what you would like to see the federal government do. do. We heard, you know, uh, bail reform is, is, is one part of this, but there are others. Yeah, and there have been changes already to, to bail reform with Bill C-48, and I think, you know, whether it's working or not, that's the challenge that we need to figure out, and are there other steps that can be looked at? So when we have conversations uh, in our communities, in our downtowns with the Crown Prosecutor, with the provinces, with the municipalities, what we are hearing is that what is happening right now isn't working. And I think that's the message that we need to all come around and rally around, is that we need to find a different way to address this. So bail reform may be one of the solutions. We also know that it's not just one solution. This is a very complicated problem, and I think Canadians understand that. Um, so when we're talking about addictions, mental health, homelessness, again, there's going to be a multifaceted strategies that are going to be required to address this, but it's about everyone coming to the table and moving in the same direction. Uh, are these uh, issues in your mind, uh, are there short-term solutions to some of these issues? Because, I, I mean, a lot of the things that you're talking about, you know, homelessness, addiction, th those are, you know, they're, they're sometimes long-term solutions to a lot of those issues. Absolutely. And I think there is a lot of great work happening um, across the country in different ways to address issues uh, uh, for those regions that make sense. But you're right. Those results are going to take time, five, ten years. Uh, we're very hopeful and we're optimistic for our communities that that will make a difference. But right now what we're hearing from businesses is that something needs to be done now. We can't wait for action. And for an example, um, downtown Winnipeg, where I work, mm -hmm. um, we actually tried something this summer uh, and it was put together very quickly where we worked with community organizations and got a higher visible presence on the street. We were able to connect more people with resources and supports. And that was a limited time, uh, not a lot of funds that were required, but what was absolutely necessary was the coordination and collaboration 
celebration of folks already doing the great work that they are on our streets. Let me just loop back to, to bail, uh, because last week we, we spoke here on Canada's Night with a criminal lawyer who says that the current system of bail is working and that bail terms are crafted to, to hit and strike the, the right balance of the presumption of innocence and, uh, you know, the duty to protect the public. You don't feel that is the case. T tell me why you don't feel that's the case. I'm definitely no expert in the justice system. Mm -hmm. um, really where we are experts though is what we're hearing and seeing and experiencing every day. We have frontline teams out on our streets in our communities. Um, we know there are challenges with repeat offenders. We know there are challenges with theft increasing. So it's coming to the table and figuring out what are the solutions. Um, so really what we would like to see is the federal government, I think there's an opportunity here for decision makers to come together uh, and lead the way uh, and bringing folks together to have that conversation to determine what is the next step that is going to make most sense to, to keep Canadians safe. What would you say to, uh, you know, folks that listen to this conversation and they say, okay, this is a bit of nimbyism? Oh, um, you know, I understand that. And I think one of the challenges when we look at, um, you know, how do we evolve our cities? Um, you know, it's really important that we are creating communities for the people who are already there and making sure I think that we're supporting people first. That is absolutely important. So it's not about moving people along or moving people away. Mm -hmm. It's how do we make sure that the supports and the resources are in place to support those folks. And also at the same time that small businesses and business owners can, can thrive and we can have vibrant neighborhoods across Canada where everyone has an opportunity to have their needs met, but also that we are driving economic development for Canada. This is a much longer conversation, but that is all the time we have. Hope you will come back again, Kate. Uh, appreciate your time on this today. That is Kate Fenske, who is with the International Downtown Association of Canada, joining us tonight from Ottawa.